Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews, the show dedicated to sitting down with local elected leaders from communities all across Canada. And our goal is to learn about who they are, what drives them, and how they are working to make their communities a better place for everyone who lives there. Now, my name is Christopher Brown, your host for this exciting journey. This unique episode of the Cross Border Interviews was recorded live at the Saskatchewan Urban Municipality Association Conference in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan in April. Today's guest is Radville Mayor Renny Barossa. I just want to know, uh, I guess the first question for me is, where did your sense of duty to serve come from, Renny? Oh, just being around town. I've been in a lot of committees and, you know, all my life, I guess. Was politics and municipal government discussed as a child growing up, or where did your desire to give back into your community via elected office come from? Well, just... You know, some people resign and they quit and, you know, just try and get in there and make a little bit of a difference in certain areas, you know. So what difference were you trying to make a difference in? Uh, Just community involvement and, you know, the town itself, like the overall infrastructure and, you know, the growth of the town. One of the big things that I, I try to get to the crux of on these interviews is apathy. People seem to be turning out of municipal politics and municipal government. They care about provincial politics. They care about federal politics. But at the end of the day, municipally, there doesn't seem to be an interest anymore. Do you find that in your community? Oh, yeah. 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 How, do you, how, do, how do we fix that? I don't know. You just, you just keep trying to get them out. You, know? you just keep trying to get them involved, eh? And do you find it more youth that are being less and less involved or just Us, everyone in general? Oh, the youth is tough to get going now. I don't know what it is, but it's, uh, they don't seem to, they don't want to get involved. So, but, you know, we had a couple, one member there, I, I call him young, he's 40. And that's a bonus, you know, because most of our council's my age. Pardon me? Most of our council is my age. Okay. And they're great to work with and you know we've we've got a lot of things done in town so i'm proud of it so when was the first election that you ran in oh boy <laughs> i'm asking That's the tough 12 question. years ago 12 years ago so. and i never run oh you've always been well, acclaimed i just yeah just there's never i just <laughs> i've never had to i've never run i in fact, the first time I run, I guess I was in Italy, and I come home when I was a councillor for two months, and then I was mayor. The mayor resigned, and they just... Appointed claimed. you into the... Well, I acclaimed, and then when the by-election told me, there was nobody against me, so... Do you think that betters your community when things like that happen? No, it's best to have somebody else coming in. I, I would think it'd be good, but, you know... A couple of, like our councillors, they are, we elect, I don't, I don't care for that, they elect all of them. You could have a whole new council, eh? And I think the last one to break the tie, they had to, they flipped the coin. Like it was the tie, eh, for the... <laughs> they flipped a coin. They Democracy fl- in action. The, that's the way to do it, I guess. They flipped the coin. They tied. Did you ever hear of that? No, I, I've heard of pulling a name out of a hat. I've never heard by a flip of a coin, though. Yeah, they, they flipped the coin. The, I wasn't there because, you know, I don't go when that. Yeah. And, yeah, that's how they said it. So you, we're, we're broadcasting live from the, well, not live, but we're broadcasting from the SUMA convention this week. I want to know from you, what are you hoping to take away from this conference this year? Oh, just health. Health is a big one. Uh, so that's a big issue in your community right now? Oh, yeah, and I sit on the hospital committee, eh? I chair it. And health is a big thing in our, well, the whole country right now, in our province. So and is it the shortage of doctors, shortage oh, of... Oh, there's, you know, they say there's shortage of doctors, nurses, and, and uh, but overall, I think when they come, they don't, they're not really committed to buy in a lot of them, eh? They want to go to the big cities. Like, I'm a small town, so you're a, I'm a bad one for you to ask because I... No, but I think it's important because we always we always talk about cities, Saskatoon, Regina, Yorkton, Swift Current, all the bigger urban centers. 
but there's people in your community. There's people in your community that need health care, need access to health care. And we've got a new, fairly new clinic. Like our, our, our hospital's 10 years old. Wow. And we're constantly fighting, like, well, COVID. I mean, COVID hit everybody and tough to recover. But, you know, you take, like, our nurses in our community and the standards that they make these nurses want to, you know, run. It, it's just, I think it's overkill. So, oh, union. Big time union. How do you. As a small town mayor, how do you get the attention of provincial governments? Because, and I'm not trying to throw anyone under the bus here, and please accept my apologies if I, I'm going to sound like a complete fool by asking this question, but the voters aren't in your community. They're going to spend their money in Saskatoon, the cities where there's larger urban centers. So how do you yell into the void and get attention to issues like health care in your community when dealing with provincial or even federal governments? Well, our community is so strong. It supported it back that hospital right to the nines. Yep. Okay. Our community is strong. We've got a hub. Like there's four towns that touch us and Radville's their home. Okay. You know, it, it's the center. And I guess the most frustrating thing is if you have your doctors like for emergency, our emergency is cut, is you know shut down lots of times during the week for one, and two, and three days, and same with the nurses. You know we're we're running on such a fine line for nurses and doctors that if one calls in sick, you're automatically your emergency's closed. That's what happens. And and I have with our emer our ambulance committee and myself, we went to the legislature and sat with four ministers. And do you feel like you're being heard? Oh, yeah. Oh, you do? But there's nothing they can do about it right now. Like, the, the health authority is is in trouble. Uh, well, you know that right across Canada. It doesn't matter. No, exactly. And it seems like small town communities are feeling the more blunt of it. But you can't get them to... We've tried many different things to it. Like you've, you I'm assuming you've probably put incentives in to say, hey, we'll give you free housing or subsidized we've got house. A house. We've got a house set up for the ambulance. We've got a house, the ones that, you know, have to stay in town on call. We have a house for them. And nothing. You know, well, we get, we get our locals, a few, you know, but you, it's just not a drawing card. You know, I don't know what the drawing card would be in the small town. So give me some hope, though. Give me some hope for small town communities right now, because you're right. Healthcare is a big issue. But what what does health, what does small town Saskatchewan has have going for it right now? Well, I don't know what to answer you for doctors and nurses, and and generally bringing the younger population back to the small towns. I don't know the answer because we've got it all. We've got you know the rinks. The, and we're an hour away from big city shopping if they want it. You know, like you could Yeah. Do. Because what's your biggest city around you? Well, we got Wavern. Okay. We got Esteban. We got Regina. Okay. Regina is 85, uh, an hour and, well, an hour and a half away. Wavern's half an hour and Esteban's an hour. Wow. So, you know, this. So you're right smack dab in the center. And well, so. <laughs> you know, and you should be able to track people. And our town has got it all. Like we got a, a really good rink. We got a, a new swimming pool coming this summer. I've spoken to many councillors and mayors in this uh, this uh, it, over the last two days, and you're the first person to say we have a pool coming. Everyone's like, we want a pool. We wish we could afford a pool. We just can't. But you have a pool coming. And we got a grant, and it's just great. It's super. We're we're ecstatic about it. And. Yeah, they're, as we're saying, well, the guy down here doing the job is talking to us about, uh, you know, moving in and he's asking for a house to rent. And wow. So, and a new John Deere dealership, a new big, big brand new shop coming in. Of course, you know, did he, did, did he tell you that our whole town office burnt to the ground? Oh. In November, we lost everything. Eh? So you have to start from scratch. Yeah, completely. Our fire hall, our uh, town office, our maintenance shop, it went right to the ground. 
What happened, if you don't mind me asking? I don't know. I think they think it's kind of an electrical thing. Okay. But so you have lots to going on in your community then, right? Yeah. Now. yeah. Big, big time. So it, it, it brings to this question, because you have to look after the citizens of your community, but also you have to look at the growth of your community. You have a pool coming. You have to rebuild. But you have citizens who still have issues of their own. Potholes. Parks oh, and our and our we've been working on infrastructure and stuff over the last ten years and we pushed the world got that handled you know so how do you balance that though how do you balance the needs of what your community wants with what the individual member of your community wants or do you see yourself in the role of mayor looking more at the city issue or the town issues compared to the the the, low, the individual issues or well, you look to the town. And of course, if you if you look after the town, you get the individuals. You're always going to have that 10% of 90 that you don't uh, you can't you can't satisfy. So you forget about them. You don't forget about them, but you just kind of put them to the side, eh? No, understandable. We we live in a very polarizing community oh, right now. I gotta just check my. No worries. Oh, it's okay. I'm good. Do, yeah, uh, two last questions, and we'll wrap up here. Um, do you find it creeping into your government, your politics of your local community, that the polarization, you're either right or wrong and will talk about things on social media but not actually engage with our local councillors? Or are people engaged where they'll give you your feedback if they actually, if you go out and ask for it? Oh, they'll give it to me if I ask for it. Okay. Yeah. So that's good. That's a sort of a silver lining here. Yeah. And I, well, I'm born and raised there, so I they all know me. Does that is that a double-edged sword though? <laughs> because no, no, I don't have any issues with it. Really? No. Because the moment you change something in your town, you pass a bylaw or a policy, it comes into effect. Yep. And I'm assuming there's probably times that your community, I'm not, I'm, I shouldn't assume, but I'm going to guess that there's sometimes that not everyone's going to be happy with all the decisions you <laughs> make. Be a bump like we put the taxes on for infrastructure and. Yeah, there again, you're 10, 10 percent of 90. You're going to get that 10 percent that are going to just scream your ear off. But you just point blank ask them. So what's your answer to this situation if it's not taxes? Usually that Does communication come into play? Oh yeah. And how? If I go ask the people of your community, would they say that the town does a good job of communicating? Or you I'm, as mayor do a good job in communicating? Well, I would hope they'd say that because I'm not shy with anybody. I don't care who comes to talk. You don't seem like you're a shy person. No. <laughs> you seem I, I usually say what's on my mind. So we're gonna, I'm going to end on this question. It's the sort of the million-dollar question that I, I wrap up with, and I want to know from you, in your opinion, Mayor, what makes the town of Radville such a unique place to live, to work, and to raise a family? It's it's got a good location. Uh, most of the people are great, and it's got everything there. Like we got the good schools, we got right the new hospital, we got we got everything to offer to them. And it's it's I sorry, but I'm not a city guy, so I Saskatoon and Regina are best in my rearview mirror. You know, what I do you like mean by that? Sorry, what do you mean? Well, by you know, I like to go back to my town. And yeah. When I leave the cities, it doesn't break. So when you leave Zuma, you're not you're not sad you're leaving Saskatoon. Oh, God, you're no. you're excited to go home. Yeah. And I and I, I enjoy working and talking with why well, I must have talked to a hundred people here, councillors and mayors and, and politicians. Or, you know. But I, when I when I leave and I see it in my rearview mirror, I'm happy. I'm going home. <laughs> Thank you so much for doing that. Thank you so much to our guests for joining us for this episode of the Cross Border Interviews. And to our viewers, thank you for tuning in and being part of this conversation. If you've enjoyed this episode, please hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all of our latest interviews and special episodes. We have some amazing guests lined up and we can't wait to share their stories with you. If you're able to, please consider backing the show to help us to continue to grow and produce more high-quality content. Every little bit helps. We appreciate your support as well. 
A link to our Patreon account is in the show notes. And if you can, please don't forget to subscribe to our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for more behind-the-scenes content, show updates, and so much more. And finally, as much as we all love our phones and technology, let's remember to put them down and have real-life, in-person conversations with the people in our lives, even if it's just for five minutes. Thank you again for watching, and we'll see you next time on the Cross Border Interviews. And remember, everyone, just keep talking.